This is Parents Rule on YouTube, and I'm Pat Montgomery, your host. And my website is parentsrulewithpat.com. Today is pretty special for me, um, pretty special for all Americans. It's the 10th anniversary of 9/11, and I think all of us are reflecting on what we were, what we were doing, and where we were when we heard the news. But my guest was actually in the middle of everything. Laura Kennedy is a business coach and a virtual assistant, and she mentors other virtual assistants. Um, you can find out more about that at laurakennedylive.com. She also has websites, flag, flag still stands for freedom.com and retire the uniform not you.com. And on Facebook, you can find her under flags for freedom. But Laura was a retired chief in the Navy who, senior chief, I'm sorry, in the Navy who retired <laughs> in January of 2001 and in September 2001 found herself in the Twin Towers on 9-11. So she is a survivor and Laura, I want to thank you for being with me and I'm so grateful that you're even alive. Um, <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> I'm certainly grateful that you're here to share your story. So tell us briefly what happened. Great. On um, So let me just give a little bit of background there. Keep, keeping in mind, I did uh, 21 years in the Navy. When 9-11 came around, I had, as Pat mentioned, just retired in January. So I was still very much in the do whatever it is they say and don't ask a re, uh, question why mode very military mode still in my brain and um, on the morning of 9-11 I was sitting in a conference room on the 11th floor of Tower 2 waiting for our morning meeting to start and um, a gentleman stuck his head in the door and he said this is not a drill. Get out of the building. So being the good sailor that I am, I immediately picked up my stuff and headed for the nearest stairwell. I didn't stop to talk on my cell phone. I didn't stop to chat with my neighbor or what, ask questions about what was going on. I went directly to the stairwell because that is what I had been trained to do. Walking into that stairwell is the last thing I remember about being in that building. Three days later I woke up in the New York County Hospital as a Jane Doe no one knew what my name was because of my pocketbook I uh, heaven only knows where that went um, but uh, I'm not still wearing dog tags no one knew who I was and um, my children if you remember back to the clips that you see on the news you'll remember a family members down um, in the general area there with um, pictures of whoever it was that was missing trying to find them in the mass hysteria that was taking place on 9-11 and my kids were some of those people that you see on the news uh, holding up my picture trying to find out where I was and it wasn't until I came out of a coma three days later after having had surgery, and, and, and yes, it's okay to chuckle about this, having had surgery to have a stiletto heel removed from my kidneys. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so that's kind of a standing so joke now. You. Somebody stepped on me or their shoe came flying through. Yeah, I don't know. But somehow it managed to end up in my kidney. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> so we'd still ingest when we see a lady with a broken heel walking down the street. We always go, "There she is!" <laughs> so to this day, I don't know how I got transported from that stairwell to that hospital, and the hospital records don't reflect that either because there were so many people being brought in with injuries and 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 you know anxiety and and you, it was just a mess. So. So um, there I was. Wow. And how did you heal from all that emotionally? Well, it took a while. Um Prior to that, I was probably, you know, the one that would step into a burning room without even thinking about it because I wasn't used to 
touching what the worst could be. In other words, what the worst outcome to be. That was way too close for my blood. I had been in uh, Afghanistan with shrapnel falling all around me, and it didn't impact me the same way. Because to me, that uh, even though you could see the fire taking place in Afghanistan, um, you weren't really touching death's doors, if that's if that's an acceptable way to describe it. Um, but having woken up with everything gone, that that definitely was a shock. It was a shock to the kids because they were used to 21 years of me, you know, flying off to be here, flying off to be there, um, and coming back. You know, they never knew because I was in the intel world. They never knew where I was going. They just knew I was going to be gone. Wouldn't be home for dinner. Um, so, but that was too much. That was that, everybody's brain. I think even across the nations, brains were on overload. Oh, yeah. So, to answer your question, time was number one. Open communication was another. The other, you know, I did the first two years. I didn't watch the clips on the, on the TV. I couldn't do it because it was just too much. Mm -hmm. You know, the brain would just freeze. Um, after that, as, as, as time went on, um, we talked about it, we walked through it, um, I actually made one trip to Ground Zero to uh, see what was left, and there, at that point there was still a gaping hole, just a big gaping hole full of debris, and um, the chills still just came right back to me. Mm -hmm. So, to um, it was a growing process, and communication was very key. But for me, it was a mind over matter. I had to do. I wasn't one of those that would go and sit down with a counselor. That's just not in in my makeup. For me, it was mind over matter. I had to convince myself that moving forward was um, going to work. That I could still, um, you know, I still cringe on the Fourth of July. Every time I hear uh, the fireworks go off, it just rumbles through me like a grenade. So uh, I guess that still takes more time. As far as the family goes, they were checking on me nonstop. I couldn't go to the grocery store without letting them know where I was going to be. Yeah, it was. I, had to, I was like, wait a minute. I'm the mom. I'm not supposed to have to tell you. You're supposed to tell me where you're going. <laughs> Exactly. So some of the some of the ways you've healed is by helping other veterans, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Um, the the website about retire the uniform, not you, is uh, amazing. And if you know any veterans who are looking for any information about how to do anything, that's the website for them. And um, Laura, I'm going to break it off here, but I want to thank you so much for being with me. Absolutely. Thank you, Pat. See your homeland under fire and her people blown away. Have you forgotten when those towers fell?